Acts chapter number 27. I'm going to begin reading at verse 27. I'll read through the end of the chapter. It says, On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped our four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it fall away. Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. None of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land in safety. For emphasis there, in verse number 31, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. I want to preach today for, in celebration of 78 years from this thought, stay with the ship. Stay with the ship. In the text here, we are taken back to the first century and Paul is on what would be equivalent today of a prison transfer. He's in one region and he's going to the city of Rome for a trial to be tried as a Roman citizen. In his writings, Paul would always write about the, his desire to go to Rome. And it would be that Rome would be his last place of ministry before God would call him home. And so this would be Paul's homeward voyage. On his way to Rome, he is placed on a ship. And it's a ship for for uh, for business it's a cargo ship and a group of a group of prisoners along with some soldiers and, and guards are on this ship and they're sailing for another island paul has mentioned now to the crew and to the captain the pilot of the ship he's shared with them brothers this is a bad time of year for we are on the other side of the feast. If you read earlier in chapter number 27, Paul gives them a warning, advises them, this is not the best time of year for us to be sailing, for it's dangerous. And, and I really believe that if we try to do this, we won't make it. And well, the captain refused to listen to Paul and heed his counsel. He listened to the pilot and the pilot says that, well, we got some money to be made. And we've got to go ahead and make this happen. And so against Paul's judgment, they sail anyhow. The Bible says that they leave out 
And on their journey, they encounter smooth sailing. And so the smooth waters give them the impression that they are okay. The smooth waters give them the impression that they have dodged uh, a bullet. They are now in good water, good territory, and so they are, have favorable conditions and they will reach their destination without incident. But then the Bible says something called a northeaster comes, a, 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 a maritime phenomenon, a geographical thing that happens with weather and water and all of that. And this great storm comes and beats upon this ship. The ship is battered and the crew is frantic and you can imagine the chaos and the fear on board as people are, are frantic about their lives. Imagine being a prisoner on this ship, shackled and chained and the ship is being tossed to and fro by the winds and the waves. And I'm sure there's some brother there chained saying, I wish they had listened to Paul. I bet you there's somebody there, there's probably a guard there looking and saying, yeah, Pilate should have listened to Paul. Maybe even Paul is saying himself, they should have listened to me. Ship is tossed to and fro. And then they, there's some debate. There's some plotting and some scheming and some brothers devise a plan that perhaps they let the lifeboat down and they could escape. And Paul makes this declaration that if these brothers don't stay with the ship, we're going to have a problem. And so here, this is what I want us to understand, that God has kept the ship of New Hope Baptist Church afloat for 78 years. She has seen her season of storm after storm after storm. But just as sure as the dark clouds roll in, we have seen the light of day. And that God has seen us through dangers seen and unseen. That God has guided us and kept us and watched over us and carried us from afar. And I say to us today, still saints, come what may, stay with the ship. For it was the cruise, the cruise survival was crucial to staying with the ship. It didn't matter if the rain was coming in sideways, it didn't matter how dark it got. How loud the clap of thunder was, how brilliant the lightning was. It didn't matter how treacherous it got. Their survival depended upon staying with the ship. And that is my argument for us today, that in light of our contemporary lifestyles, in light of what's happening culturally around us, in light of the arguments about why the, ch the, sh the church is no longer relevant, I don't care about what the, the hip hoppers say, I don't care about what the political analysts say, I don't care about what the economists say, I know that I need to stay on board. I know that I need to stay with the ship. I know that my best chances for making it is to stay with the ship because it's on board the ship where God is blessing. It's on the ship where God is moving. It's on the ship where God is keeping. And so this text affirms congregational life in contemporary context. There are all kind of arguments out there now about why people feel like it's just not in their best interest to go to church. There's all these arguments and all these debates about out there now about why people feel like the church is just no longer doing it for them. Or people say that grandmama goes to church, but they ain't got time for the church. The church was grandmama's church, but it's not my church today. People feel like the church is behind the times and the church is no longer relevant, but still I hear the voice of Paul, stay with the ship. And so I'm just going to move through this text a little bit this morning and we're going to celebrate the blessing of being on board. We're going to celebrate the blessing that God has allowed us to stay on deck. We're going to celebrate the blessing where God has allowed us to man the ship. We're going to celebrate the blessing of being called New Hope Baptist Church. Amen. 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 As we move through this text, the first thing that we appreciate is that storms are inevitable. Don't ever think now, I don't care how good you got it right now, whether you are, uh, you, the money may look good, your walk may be straight, your cars may be running, your health may be good, but I promise you, trouble is on the way. The old folks say that, you know what, this thing about storms, either you are on your way out of a storm, you in the middle of a storm, or you on your way into a storm. 
I don't don't let don't get it twisted. Don't think for one minute that you are exempt from trouble in your life. Don't let your youth fool you just because you can sprint 40 yards in less than four seconds. Don't think that just because you can bench press a hundred pounds. Don't think that just because you can still walk like you got it in a pair of heels. Don't think that you got it together. Life will creep up on you and the bottom can fall out and the, the stuff can cave in and before you know it, you won't have a check big enough to write. You won't have a friend to call on. You won't have nobody there to lean on and depend on. Trouble is coming. You just keep watching the weather and I promise I promise you that clouds will roll in and the winds will blow and the rain will start beating down just like what happens here on this ship. They were setting sail and they felt like because they had these favorable conditions that they made the tragic assumption that it would be this way all the way. I say to us now, New Hope, that in our sophistication, that we have a diminished the value of the church in contemporary life. We cannot allow favorable conditions to give us a false sense of security. Right now, we cannot allow ourselves to wear church membership as a loose garment or an accessory out of our wardrobe. Don't think that just because your credit is in order and just because you have now have gainful employment that now is a time to go to church because socially that's what people do on Sunday morning. And don't think now that, that just because it's all good in your life that it will always be that way because I promise you just as sure as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, trouble will surely cross your path. Jesus says that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. Jesus said that you will have trouble. So don't let anybody else convince you otherwise. Don't let anybody tell you that if you know Christ, you won't have problems. If you know God, you will be rich. If you know God, you will have this and you will have that because that is not what the Bible says. James says, count it all joy when you go through diverse trials and temptations, not if you go through them, not if you possibly have trouble, but James says, just as sure as trouble will come, count it all joy. And so here we cannot now, we cannot, cannot miss the fact that storms will come. Church membership cannot be a fair weather commitment. That is, you know, people, people love to go to church when it's sunny outside. People love to go to church when they ain't got no trouble at home and work is good and children are good and money is good. But let stuff start getting a little raggedy around the life and you won't see as much of them anymore. That's when I know something's going on with people because I don't see them anymore. There are people, we've been here for now seven years. Pastor Lynn and I have been here together for six years and every now and then we'll raise some names of some people. Have you seen so and so? No, I haven't seen them. Y'all do the same thing. Have you seen so and so? And then, then we'll try to do some investigation. We'll try to call and so and so will say, well, I've just been kind of going through some stuff. Trying to get myself together. And I'm telling you that the ship is your best bet. The ship is your best place. The ship is your best bet in life. And don't let the devil let you think now that you can get yourself together. Never think now that outside of the ship, you got better chances of survival. You got to stay with the ship, brother. You got to stay with the ship, sister. You can't drift off and feel like that you got to take care of it yourself. That's probably how you got in the mess the first place. Trying to take care of it ourselves. We can't fix ourselves. Storms are a matter of God's sovereignty. Stop thinking now that if bad weather comes your way, it means now that, that, that you got issues in your life and that God does not care. Sometimes God will send some rain just to prove a point. Sometimes God will send a storm because behind the storm, he's got a bigger blessing. Sometimes God's got to let the rain beat down in your life because he wants to replenish you and grow you. 
and everybody in here, everybody who's blessed, you are blessed on the other side of some kind of storm. Can I get a witness in here? Have you always had fair weather in your life? Some of you in here, you got so sedated and stuck up that you have forgotten what it felt like to be on your back without anything. And now that you can write your name legibly, and now that you got a business card and you got a title, now we have forgotten how far God has brought us from. But it's nobody but the grace of God who has been holding us and keeping us. And how dare we act like now that we don't need the ship. But if it had not been for the ship, she would have sunk a long time ago. That storms are a matter of God's sovereignty. And so God uses storms. He uses them to remind us that we cannot make it without him. He uses storms to break us and to bless us. God uses storms to replenish our lives and to make us further sensitive to the fact that we cannot live in this life and cover and keep ourselves. And so just know storms are coming. But then there's something else here. The ship, as I've been saying, the ship gives us the best chance of safety. It's in the ship. Listen, when you were saved, salvation was a rebirth. You were born again. And when you were born again, you were born into a community. When God saves you, the rebirth and the regeneration that happens in salvation was never something that happened in isolation. When God called you out of darkness, he called you into his marvelous light but he didn't put you on an island of light. When God saved you, God called you into a community of other called out people. That's why you gotta stop telling yourself that you can do bad all by yourself. Stop telling yourself that you don't need the church because the church can't do nothing for you. Stop telling people, well, the church is full of a bunch of hypocrites and all of that. The church is full of hypocrites, and you are one of those hypocrites. The Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The only difference is that we are real with our hypocrisy, and you trying to keep yours on the low. Or maybe you just haven't realized it yet, but the truth is that every one of us need the ship. And so that community that God calls us into is his church. Christianity is to be lived out in the context of community. Stop making your church membership a matter of individuality. Stop using the language that I got to get to church to get my blessing, to get my praise on, to get my miracle, to get my this, to get my word, to get my sermon, to get my love, to get my handshake, to get my man, to get my woman, to get my this, to get my that. Everybody's coming to get, but if nobody's giving, then we ain't going to get nothing. Living in the context of community means then that all of us are connected to each other. Whether you know your neighbor's name or not, God has placed them in your life for such a time as this. And that we are responsible for each other. Ain't but one ship. New Hope Baptist Church. Sometimes we treat the pew we sit on as our own little congregation. Treat the pew like our own church address. We don't want people to sit on our pew. Or we treat our own ministry like it's our own little mini congregation. You know, we get, we get carried away sometimes just because you, we've got enough resource that we can assign budgets to ministries. We act as if that the budget that's assigned to the ministry can bless nobody but the handful of people who work in that ministry. But we do ministry not for the people who just sit in the ministry, but we minister to everybody. We're all in this thing together. Anyway, we are one body. It just so happens that God allows us to minister through diversity. But in the context of community, one cannot be his or best self without being connected with the church. I have no doubt that everybody in here, you have greatest desires for your life 
and nobody out praise you for yourself. I am positive that everybody in here is praying for God's choicest blessings over your life. I mean, you praying them prayers, Lord, open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that I don't have room enough to receive. You're praying, Lord, you make me the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm more than a conqueror. I can do anything but fail. Great is he that is in me that he is in the world. And you are praying those prayers that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And all you praying those prayers. Telling everybody, you speaking over yourself. I'm speaking life into myself and I'm God's best and I'm blessed by the best. And we got the t-shirts and the crosses and the Bibles and the Christian paraphernalia and the what would Jesus do bracelets and all of that stuff. We declare in all of that. But do you realize that all of it is a waste of your time and your money if you are disconnected from a local church? That it is God's will that every person who professes the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, when you gave your life to Christ, you gave him your life and you committed yourself to his church. Nobody in here is better than God's church. Nobody in here has a life that's more precious than that of the church. And nobody in here can do better without the church. I keep saying this through the invitation that you need the church because it's only through the church that you can live up to your greatest potential. It is ludicrous for you to think that the church holds you back. That's what Satan wants you to think. It is ludicrous for you to think that the church is standing in the way of your blessing. It is ludicrous for you to think that you can do better trying to make it happen by yourself, disconnected from the community. Our natural tendency is to isolate ourselves and live for ourselves. That's what happened on the ship. Some of those sailors got together and said, man, listen, this ain't working. But you see this little boat over here? While everybody is, 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 is caught up doing other things, bailing water out the ship and running around scared. We're going to pretend we're lowering the anchors, but we're going to let this boat down. And a handful of us, we're going to escape to safety. But Paul says, and hear him, unless these men stay with the ship, we'll all perish. He says, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. There are people who are trying to jump ship and trying you thinking that you can make it out in the world and in the storms of life by yourself without the church is just as ludicrous as these men thinking that they can weather the storm in a lifeboat. And we have a lot of people that are doing lifeboat living in stormy situations. Got to stay on the ship. But you know what ship jumping mentality is? Ship jumping mentality are people who are only concerned about themselves. Ship jumping mentality is that so and so church got a bigger parking lot. So I'm going to go over there and show up there half an hour late. And leave 15 minutes early. Ship jumping mentality is that, that I don't like them. Because I don't like them, I'm not coming anymore. Ship jumping mentality is that, that I can't stand so-and-so. The music is too loud and there's too many of this and too many. I don't like what he's preaching now, so I'm going to go over here for a little while. I don't like those kind of sermons that they're preaching. I don't like the fact that they have so-and-so in the pulpit. I don't like the fact they don't have chairs. And I don't like this with that ship jumping mentality. Ship jumping mentality. Y'all think I'm fussing and all that. I'm just, I'm preaching about what it means to belong to the church. And I got your attention. And while I have your attention, I know that God is going to bless us and that God is going to make us better. You got to stay with the ship. Our lives are too fragile and none of us, we are no match for the stormy seas that are out there. 
we are no match for trying to go out there and row our little boats against the waves and the winds that beat against us. You may think now that you may be making some progress, but you're only finding yourself getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the storm. And it may look like the ship may be sinking, but if you grab the bucket rather than trying to get to the boat, maybe the ship might not sink. Maybe if you build a part of trying to save the ship rather than trying to escape the ship, maybe you'd have a different perspective. But we have more people who are more concerned about themselves and jumping ship than we do people who are trying to save the ship. We're in it together, church. Everybody in here, nobody's any better than the next. All of us, we are important to each other. Everybody in here has got a name. And with every name, there's a story. And with every story, there is a life and a testimony. And that testimony is valuable for somebody else in this auditorium. And if it's not valuable for somebody in this auditorium, it is valuable for somebody else in the world. And so we owe it to each other to affirm each other's story and help somebody and encourage somebody to be telling that story so that somebody else can get on board as well. Never let anybody think that we don't have no more seats on the ship. But the ship has always got room. Just as the hymn writer says, there is room at the cross for you. And so we'll never find ourselves, and if we run out of seats, we're going to go get some more seats. But since I've been here, we've never found ourselves filled to capacity. God continues to send people our way. And therefore, leaving the ship, and here's a part that's a challenge. Paul tells them, he says, if these men don't stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. Look at, look at, look at the grammar here. Paul says, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. Paul is talking about a level of accountability. Leaving the ship not only jeopardizes your own life for jumping ship, but you jeopardize the lives of the people who left on the ship. Yes. Stop thinking that you aren't accountable to anybody. And stop thinking that you aren't accountable for anybody else. God has brought us into each other's lives. And therefore, I am accountable for you and you are accountable for me. If I jump ship, not only do I jeopardize myself, but I leave you in a weakened state. And if everybody's trying to jump ship, then we don't stand a chance. The folk out there in the little boat's going to get swallowed up. And those of us who are left trying to save the ship, we're going to meet our demise as well. There's no value in jumping the ship. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about, I'm trying to raise your appreciation for the church in your life. I told you, we wear church membership like a loose garment. But in essence, what God wants the church to be, the church should be a sense of home for you. Church should feel like home to you. I know that people in here, just, they, they, they say those kind of things. That you have. Some people, like Sister Jones, talk about how she loves her church. How she feels like it's home because it nurtured her through the difficult seasons of her life and celebrated with her through the times of joy in her life. That's how home is. Home isn't always little house on the prairie. Sometimes home is nightmare on Elm Street, isn't it? But it's still home. It doesn't matter. You can go and travel and stay in some of the nicest hotels. But at the end, after a while, though, you reach a point on the journey where you're like, you know what? I'm just kind of ready to, I'm ready to go back home. Because there's no place like home. That's what Dorothy said. I was in a conference a while back. I remember last year I was teaching in a conference and I was staying in a hotel and they had one of them high dollar mattresses where it was even all the way across. You roll over and, you, and, and, and it's, 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 you, there ain't no dips, ain't no lumps in it. And the first night it was wonderful. The second night it was just as good. The third night I was restless. By the fourth night, I missed the dip in my own mattress. 
by the fourth night, I missed the creaking in my own bed. I loved having the housekeeping service come in and come into a freshly made bed every day. But that just comes a time where you just miss your own clutter sometimes. You miss tripping over your own shoes sometimes. You miss coming in and fussing at your own people sometimes because that's what home is. And the church ought to have a place of home in your own heart. You ought not wear the church like it's a jacket that you pull out and uh, just just as in, in good seasons. You know, it ought not be a pair of earrings that you only wear with one certain pair of shoes. It ought to be that pair of earrings that you wear every single day. Church life ought to be like brushing your teeth. It ought to be automatic. And I know y'all brushing your teeth in here. You, you, this ought to, this ought, this ought to come to you. And when you're not at church, you ought to know you're not at church. When you are not with the saints and not engaged in the fellowship of believers, you ought to know that you are not there. But if you find yourself more comfortable outside of here than inside of here, you're in trouble. When you have so prioritized and stacked your life and calendar where you cannot in fit corporate worship and devotion to your local church into your life, you've got a problem. You got to stay with the ship. Ship jumping behavior will undermine the discipleship making process. Self-centeredness is ship jumping behavior. People who think the sun rises and sets on them. Ship jumping behavior is narcissism. People obsessed with themselves. People who always have some kind of grievance. Feel like, you know, every time something happens in their lives, they're quick to dog the church because nobody showed up. But you've never seen them at one funeral. You've never seen them praying for one person. Never seen them at one wedding. Never seen them at one special service outside of Sunday morning. Never seen them engaged in the discipleship ministry of the church. Narcissistic behavior. That's a ship jumping mentality. But then as we conclude this, the, the, the ship gives us our best chance of safety, but also the ship provides the best chance for nourishment. Paul, it wasn't enough for Paul to tell them these men need to stay on the ship. But then while on the ship, Paul tells them, brothers, y'all better eat. It's been two weeks, 14 days, y'all been caught up with the storm. But you need to eat something. Because if you don't eat something, you're not going to have any strength. He literally, literally tells them your survival depends upon you eating. Now, I want you to really understand. I want you to get this. There's a reason why God wants you connected to the ship. There's a reason why God wants you on the ship, wants you here. God wants you here because this is where you are nurtured. This is where you are fed. This is where you are given the tenets and the precepts and the principles of how to live the Christian life. Maybe you're saying, well, I can read the Bible on my own, but God didn't save you for you to read his word on your own. You ought to get that from the Ethiopian eunuch. He could read, but he didn't understand what he was reading. It wasn't until Philip came alongside of him and helped him understand what the scriptures were saying that he ultimately had an experience with God that would save his life. You need nourishment and nurture from the ship. And Paul says, brothers, you guys need to eat something. New Hope, I promise you that if we don't get this discipleship thing together, we're going to all be watching each other drown. We're all going to be out there trying to cheer each other on, but we're all going to be swallowing water, taking on water. And so we have to allow ourselves to be nurtured and to be fed because just as important as staying on the ship is eating on the ship and to not eat the food provided on the ship only worsens the predicament so you can't tell people well i go to new hope baptist church stop going to new hope baptist church and belong to new hope baptist church start investing at new hope baptist church start eating at new hope baptist church but i'm not talking about when we have food 
I'm not talking about showing up when we have dinners and chicken wings and, 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 and cheese balls and potato chips and, and church punch. Nobody has better church punch than New Hope Baptist Church. Nobody got better chicken wings than New Hope Baptist Church. But we serve more than chicken wings and hot dogs and taco dinners. We serve the word of God here. And we lay out a full buffet on a regular basis. And so that's why you can't come. You got to stop showing up here once every six weeks. You got to be here Sunday in and Sunday out where you can get nourishment, where you will be stout, stable, and strong to endure the pressures of life. Because I promise you, Dr. Phil can't give you enough wisdom to make it. Oprah Winfrey won't give you enough to make it. And I don't care how much money you make, your financial advisor would not be able to give you the reinforcement that the Word of God can. And the Bible says that man cannot live on bread alone, but on the Word of God. And so we must devote ourselves to the preaching and the teaching of Scripture because Paul tells us, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable for reproof, for correction, that we might be furnished and equipped for service. You need the word of God. Stop thinking that church is just about coming in and singing good songs, giving high fives and getting yelled at by the preacher and then leaving a little dollar and leaving. I was... I was with some pastors. I ain't gonna tell you this pastor's name because he might come here and preach. <laughs> but he said, he said, man, he said, I had to tell our people, you can't be no adult and put a dollar in the envelope. A dollar? Now, 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 don't get offended. If a dollar is all you have, then put it in the envelope. But you can't drive no Cadillac, Ford Taurus, Chevette, El Camino. You know, I'm going down here, you know. I'm, 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 I'm decreasing and, and, and still, you know, you, 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 you can't be driving and working and dressing and only give a dollar. But when we talk about being nurtured and nourished by the church, that you understand that the word tells me that I am a steward of God and that God is looking at me and God makes assessment of my life based on what I do with all of my resources. Not with just what I do with my lips and my tongue, but God also wants to see what I do with my money. And so you start understanding that when you get fed by the church, when you get fed by the word of God, that you have power, you have strength, you have sustenance, you have wisdom, you have strength that you didn't know you realized, you have power that you didn't know about. You start understanding and seeing life clearer and you don't get caught up and you don't fall for the same mess that you used to fall for because the church has fed you and fed you well and I don't care what anybody says we serve a good well balanced diet at New Hope Baptist Church we're not going to give you Snickers and chicken wings we're going to give you prime rib we're going to give you we're going to give you good meat we're going to give you good solid food we're not going to feed you on powdered donuts and cotton candy we're going to give you stuff that's going to stick to your ribs. Going to cover you in the storms of your life. We want people to find shelter in the word of God. And you know what? People find themselves confused often because they do not realize what the word says. You don't know what the word says about you and what it says about your circumstances, what it says about your situation. But if you stay on the ship, you would have some clarity about your life. You talking about why do I keep falling in? Why do I keep making the same mistakes? Why do I keep having the same problems? Why do I keep falling for the same stuff? Why do I keep having the same burdens? Well, maybe you need to check your diet. What are you eating? And where are you getting it from? And so New Hope, we need to stay with the ship. Church membership must be appreciated as survival. And I don't know about you, but I know that if it had not been for the church, I wouldn't be who I am today. If it had not been for the ship, I don't know where I'd be right now. And I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for the ship, you wouldn't be where you are. So you need to stay with the ship. 
I'm so glad that the ship is still sailing. And there were days where I tried to swim on my own, but the ship never left my side. There were days where I thought I could backstroke my way out of something, but I still needed the ship. There were days where I thought that the lifeboat was much more appealing, but the ship wouldn't let me go. I'm so glad that the ship has been the ship in my life. And you know what? Don't st stop telling people how you thank God that he gave you money that you could do such and such. It was the ship who ministered to you in your time of need. It was the ship who came there when you didn't have nobody else checking on you. It was the ship who was writing you letters and praying for you in the midnight hour. It was the ship that poured into your life it was the ship that gave you the wisdom and the courage and the knowledge and the encouragement to go on a little while longer. Say what you want about the ship, but I'm staying with the ship. I'm staying with the old ship of Zion where King Jesus is our captain and there ain't no danger in God's waters. I'm staying with the old ship of Zion and she is still afloat and I'm saying all aboard everybody. Let's set sail and let's go on with King Jesus. Let's tell the world that God is saving and God is still in the miracle working business. That God is still in the blessing business. That God is still raising the sick up and God is still opening blinded eyes and God still wants the best for your life. You got to stay with the ship church. That means then I'll see you back Sunday morning. I see you on Wednesday night for Bible study. I see you in the choir rehearsal. I see you in building board meetings. I see you in church meetings. I see you at funerals. I see you at rehearsals. I'll see you when the church comes together for fellowship. Because after all, we need the ship, don't we? Are you glad you're on the ship this morning? Do you thank God for the ship this morning? Are you grateful for the ship that's carried you this morning? I don't know about you, but if it wasn't for this ship, I don't know where I'd be. But I'm so glad that God has given me his church and his people. I am who I am because of the people that God has sent into my life. And I pray that there are people out there who can say, I am who I am because of the ministry of Howard Earl. I pray that there are people out there that can say, I am who I am because of the old ship called New Hope Baptist Church. I, I can't wait to that day. When God, when God calls us from this place and we're on the other side, casting our crowns across the glassy sea and we'll reflect about what the ship has meant to us and how the ship has carried us, how the ship has been our ark of safety. New Hope, there's going to be some rough seas ahead, but we need each other. Going to be some dark clouds out there, but we need each other. Going to be some challenges out on the horizon, but you got to stay with the ship. Going to be some people who are going to walk out on you, but you got to stay with the ship. Going to be some people who will turn their backs on you, but you got to stay with the ship. Going to be some unemployment out there, but you got to stay with the ship. Going to be some bad diagnoses out there, but you got to stay with the ship. Going to be some days where it seemed like the ship ain't going nowhere, but the ship will still be floating. Going to be some days where it looked like the ship is behind the times, but you got to stay with the ship. And so you got to, you got to tell yourself every single day, stay with the ship. The ship needs me. The ship needs me. The ship needs my ministry. The ship needs my testimony. The ship needs my joy. The ship needs my gift. Stay with the ship. Happy anniversary, New Hope. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Listen. Listen. All, all I want us to, all I want us to, what I want more than anything for New Hope Baptist Church is I want for her to know who she really is. I want her to live up to her potential. This church can be so much more than what she is right now. You've heard testimonies this morning from members and you've heard from community leaders. That's just a fraction of who we can really be. Just a fraction of it. My challenge to you is how, how do you see the church in your life right now? Is this just something social for you? Is this just something to fill 
a two-hour window of time on Sunday morning for you? Is this just something that just kind of appeases your conscience? You don't feel as bad on Sunday afternoon if you know you at least made it to church? Or will you start understanding, you know what? God gave me his church. And that God's church blesses me. And because God's church blesses me, I owe more to his church. My prayer is that every person in here would begin to appreciate their own church home. And they would treat it like home. That we would honor our church. And we'd honor our church by investing in the life of our church. We would honor our church by, by making our attendance a commitment. Honor our church by investing our finances in our church. You'd honor the ministry and the legacy of the church by engaging in the teaching ministry of the church. Do you know that less than 10% of our Sunday morning attendance is engaged in our Bible study? And yet we call ourselves members of the church. Do you know only about 70 or 80 people attend Sunday school on Sunday mornings? And yet we say that we're this great and wonderful church. You know, we have people that, that, that come to church and they come once a month. And yet we talk about how we're a part of the church and we want God's blessings for us. Imagine what God can do with you and through you if you devoted yourself to his church in a way that honored him. God is already blessing us beyond measure with a half-hearted commitment. Just imagine what God could do with us if we gave him more of ourselves. My challenge to all of us, I'm challenging you to give the church the top place in your affections. You ought not let any other institution get greater devotion from you than your church. This is your church. It's not my church. It's our church. I can't do this without you, and you can't live your life without each other. The people around you, the person sitting next to you, the person behind you, the person in front of you, God placed them in your life, and he placed them there for a reason. He placed them in your life for you to receive from them and for them to receive from you. Let's be a better church. Can we do that? Can we do that? And so let's start this way. Right now, I want to invite somebody. I'm going to invite somebody to set sail with us. I want to invite somebody aboard to come aboard. But this is not an appeal for you to come aboard the New Hope Baptist Church vessel. That's secondary. What's primary first is for you to come aboard the family of faith, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. I'm extending an invitation for somebody to start their own personal relationship with the God of heaven.